This story begins before I was born. The year is 1990, and a retired couple has just moved into a brand new home, only to discover, heavens to Betsy, it didn't come with any window blinds. So to make a little extra money, they decide to do some babysitting and put an ad in the newspaper. Back in my day, the internet came in the mail. Meanwhile, my mother was about to return to work after maternity leave. My brother and her brand new baby daughter, my sister, needed a daycare. My mom worked in sales at a greeting card company, so she spent a lot of time driving between stores to check what kinds of cards they were running out of. You know, happy birthday, sorry your grandma died, that sort of thing. But spending so much time in the car is not terribly fun. Me. So she started looking at various daycares, evaluating them, investigating if you will. You can't expect her to leave her brand new baby just anywhere. Maybe one of those used babies with a few scratches already, but the new ones need a screen protector at least. The first place Mom Tom visited was a licensed in-home daycare. The lady running the place warmly welcomed her in. She would have offered a place to sit if literally every surface wasn't piled high with papers, laundry, and various garbagey bits of garbage. A baby was crawling in a literal pile of dirt in the kitchen as a feral looking dog stepped over him. Where did you get licensed? The back of a Walmart? In the words of Lemon Grab, it was... Not great. And almost every place she went to had the same vibe or wasn't open late enough. After weeks of searching, she had nothing. Personally, I think the feral dog would have been a great babysitter, but what do I know? Eventually, she looked in the local newspaper where she found just one ad for childcare. We'll babysit, in your home, two kids. And my mom was ecstatic. I can hardly contain myself. Now, I don't remember this because I didn't exist yet, but she called the number and asked the lady about babysitting and if they could meet up. In the background, you could hear her shout, Dad, are we going anywhere today? No. I guess after years of raising their own kids, Harry and Emma had just gotten used to calling each other dad and mom. They agreed to meet. So my mom dressed my sister up in the cutest pink dress she could find, hoping it would distract from her horns. And it worked. Emma would babysit, but just for a bit. You know, until she made enough to get blinds. Well, a few months turned into a few years. My mom got married, and soon after, I was born. Emma was there to give me my first gift, a stuffed blue bear. Later, when I learned to talk, the only other bear I knew was Winnie the Pooh, so I called him Blue Pooh. But Emma wasn't having any of this new baby business. She told my mom, I can't watch another baby. You'll just have to find someone else. And find someone else she didn't. Unlike with my sister, this time her maternity leave ended the second we rolled out of the hospital. So if Emma wasn't gonna babysit me, I had no choice but to go to work. I may be only a week old, and I may be easily mistaken for a weird little potato, but my country, nay, my mommy, needs me. My job was to sit in a comfy little stroller and sleep all day. A few days into Take Your Potato to Work month, a random lady came up and, without even asking, pulled the cover back on the stroller. Oh, let me see your baby. <coughs> oh, well, I better go. I'm not feeling well. <laughs> what the sh**? She just coughed in my little baby face. Needless to say, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. When Emma heard what happened, she said, Well, you have no business taking that baby to work. You just leave him with me, till you find someone else to look after him. And the way I like to tell the story is that's when she fell in love with me. A few weeks later, my mom still hadn't found anyone, and Emma goes, Will you just stop looking right now? You can find somebody when he's a little older. He doesn't need some stranger coming in here. For years, my mom would ask if she should find somebody else, and Emma would always say, You hush and leave that baby here. My Timbird needs me. And now I'm gonna skip a few things to when I was five years old. My mom was single and struggling to support three kids on her own. So when she met a charming and successful guy who promised to give her the moon and let her quit her job to focus on raising us, she married him, and we moved to a town that might as well have been on the moon it was so far away. Emma was such a big part of my life, from the moment I could talk I always just called her grandma. She was my grandma, so moving away was devastating. I remember leaving her house in tears. Grandma, it's so easy to come here, but it's so hard to go. Luckily, the guy my mom married turned out to be a total jerkwad. Before we moved into his house, he made us get rid of our dog. I know, that's bad enough, but there's more! When I was a kid, I was just bursting with affection. You're telling me this guy's my new dad? Hell yeah. One time I sat next to him on the couch and gave him a big hug. I love you, daddy. And he shoved me off the floor. I'm not your dad. And that's how I learned about emotional damage. One time he told my sister to clean her room and she did about as well as you'd expect a little kid, but she left some socks sticking out of the top of her dresser drawers. How terrible. Anyway, he thought that was a good excuse to unleash all of his pent up rage. I remember hiding in my room and trying not to cry while I listened to him beat her.
And I don't want to overstate it, because I know a lot of people had it worse. Like, my sister. I just experienced a taste of trauma, and I turned out fine. At some point, my mom looked through his browser history and found that he had been on a dating site talking to other women. His username was something like Handyman1234. Okay. But the way she handled it was ice cold. She used star 67 so her number wouldn't come up on his caller ID, and when he answered, she used a really flirty voice. Hi, Handy. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Anyway, he laughed and asked who it was, and she said, I want a divorce. And with that, we moved back to a place just a few blocks away from Grandma Emma. We were gone for a year, but we made it home. I'm so lucky to have had her in my life. Emma taught me so many things, but I think the most important was that you don't have to be blood relatives to be family. I love you, Grandma.